An honest prank on our captain gets him some very unwanted attention, and I get caught maybe the most embarrassing thing that happened to me, making me look like a sexual deviant on an aircraft. In this edition of Cockpit Confessionals, coming up. Hey 7-4 crew, welcome back. If you don't know me, my name's Kelsey. I'm a 747 pilot. My channel, 7-4 Gear, is all about aviation. Now thanks to the Kens and the Karens of the internet, I have to tell you that I'm not involved in any of these stories, even though I tell them in the first person, it just makes them easier to tell. Most of them have been sent to me from people on Instagram or other places from other crew members all around the world. The other thing I need to tell you is, this is my only non-child family friendly series, so if you're a kid, and you're under 18, go let your parents know that some weird guy on the internet is trying to tell you some very weird stories and ask their permission before you watch the video. Be a good boy or a good girl, just like, as you can imagine, I was growing up. Let's get into it. Now this joke started off as kind of an innocent thing because when you're flying, there's no way to verify any information. And while you're flying, sometimes people tell you things that sounds like it wouldn't be right, but you have no way to verify it because there's no internet. And what was happening is we were on a repo flight, which means we were repositioning an aircraft from Europe back to Miami, and we were doing it with flight attendants. So we had, I think, about 13 flight attendants on the aircraft. The rest were staying behind in Europe to take another aircraft. We were flying this plane back. And the great thing about doing a repo flight, it's really one of my favorite things to do, is that the flight deck door is open. The flight attendants can come and go through the flight deck kind of like it used to be back in the 60s and 70s and 80s. Uh, you can come in and out, and it's really chill. It's a really easy thing and that's really one of my favorites and what happened was one of the flight attendants had came on and sat up there for the takeoff because there's there's not the same rules normally if you're doing a normal operating flight they're not allowed to be up there in this case when it's an empty flight with just flight attendants then a flight attendant can come up and sit up there in the extra seat and watch everything and listen to everything that goes on and I think it's really something that should happen so that way they understand what we're doing up there because they have really no idea so while we're flying across the ocean, the captain brings up that he just got divorced. And usually when the captain starts bringing up that, it starts to get very negative. And I'm not trying to listen to a really negative story of what's going on. And so he starts talking about that. And then the flight attendant that's next to me says, Hey, hey it's time to get on those dating apps. Now this captain is an older guy and I thought he was going to be like, no, I'm old school. I don't do that stuff. But he, he turns around and he goes, well, what, what should I do? Where, where should I go? I don't know what, I don't know what's going on. I've been married for 25 years and I, I don't even know how, what it's like to be single now. Like what's going on? And I'm thinking like, oh man, this guy's in for a, a world of change because things have changed a lot. The dating scene in the last 25 years, I can imagine. And so she starts listing them off. Okay, Cupid, plenty of fish, hinge, tinder. And then I jokingly said, and don't forget about Grinder. And everybody starts laughing. Cap turns around and is like, what's Grinder? And obviously I said, oh man, Cap, that's maybe a bit too high speed for what you're getting into. Let's start you off slow. We'll get you like plenty of fish or okay, Cupid. We'll, we'll get you off slow before you get into the Grinder stuff. And everyone starts laughing and he just said, oh, okay. And just kind of disregarded it. So I didn't think he would be thinking anything about it. So. He noted down and plenty of fish and an OK Cupid in his phone and, and we just kind of left it like that and I didn't think anything more of it and then my break started so me and the flight attendant ended up leaving those two guys up there and I went back and got food because that's what I do all the time when I'm flying. If you aren't familiar with Grindr, Grindr is a dating app for gays and obviously the captain was straight so I was making it as a joke. I didn't really think anything of it. I went back, I got my food, I brought some food up to those two guys that were up there, me and the other flight attendant, and I saw he was looking through his pictures. Now this captain was a good looking guy. He looked kind of like Tom Selleck. So he's this good looking guy and he's like, which photos, which photos? So the flight attendant who, you know, girls are typically better as far as for finding things that are aesthetically pleasing in photos. She starts helping him pick all the photos and it's, I don't know, it's kind of fun for me to watch all this go on. And she starts picking all these different photos like this one and that one. Oh, let's do this one and crop it. And then they're sending some to me and I'm, you know, in changing them, improving them because they have all the different, for the things I do on Instagram and some of the different photography stuff that I do, I'm, I'm improving the lighting and things like that to make the photos better. So I'm doing all of that and then sending him and air dropping them back to him so he's got them. So we get five or six really good photos of him and, and the guy's a good looking guy. And of course, what's every pilot gonna do when they make a dating profile is they're gonna add pictures of them in a pilot uniform. And now I know this because even people who use and steal my photos to make dating profiles for themselves, I guess, use my photos and it's always a photo of me in my uniform. Now pilot fatigue is a real thing. It even has its own page on Wikipedia. 
One of the most important parts is this thing right here. It significantly increases the chance of pilot error. And that is why pilots always have the right to say they're fatigue. And they can get out of any flight by saying they're fatigue and there's no repercussions or no penalties. And that's because airlines and places like the FAA have learned that a pilot being tired is one of the most dangerous things that can happen when we're on the flight deck because you make mental errors. Errors that you would normally catch if you were paying attention. And after a 10 hour flight, this captain was really tired. But that didn't stop him as soon as he got to the hotel because he set up a profile for plenty of fish Hinge and Grinder. He downloaded those app, I guess, being tired and wasn't paying attention and just go, went ahead and created these profiles and his kind of half awakeness. Because usually after a flight, even if you're tired, it takes a little while to just kind of mentally unwind. Sometimes people will read a book, watch some TV. I usually do some YouTube stuff, but just something to kind of unwind from your day of flying and then getting ready to go to sleep. So he downloaded these apps and just started creating these profiles that he kind of wound down to go to sleep. And again, like I talked about earlier, when people stole my photos, they always use photos of me in uniform to create those profiles because, you know, pilots have to say we're pilots, just, I don't know, something that you're required to do, basically. Here's a couple of stories that I put up a while back on Instagram with people stealing my pictures, and even this one got verified. I don't even know how that's possible. Anyway, in an unfortunate turn of events, there was a cruise that was going out of Miami that next day, and I didn't even know this existed until after this happened. I called a buddy of mine, and there is such a thing as a gay cruise, where it's just a big group of guys that go out and they just have the time of their life, and these guys looked like they were getting ready to have the time of their life. Well, the captain was already down there having breakfast, and some of these guys were walking past his table saying like, hey, Cappy, and things like that, and he was like, hey, like, how do these people know me? Well, you can imagine how they found him. When he created his grinder profile, he left it open, not knowing he just created the profile, it was approved, and there he was down at breakfast, and all these guys were getting ready to go party, and they saw his profile. Now, the captain was there about 10 minutes before me. When I joined him for breakfast, I just sat down and just started talking with him, and we're just kind of talking about the day and where we're going next and stuff like that, because usually we split up. But we're talking about where we're going, and I noticed another guy came by and said hi. And I said, who's, who's that guy? And he goes, oh, I don't know. That whole table over there of guys, they keep coming over and saying hi to me. I don't, I don't know what's going on. And I said, that big table of the gay guys that are over there? He goes, yeah. And I was like, hmm, weird. I don't know. And then another guy came by and started talking to us. And I was like, what, what are you guys up to? I'm trying to figure out, like, are they the other flight crew or how? To try to put it all together. And he goes, oh, we're going on the big cruise, the... Atlantis, I think they said. And so he said, we're going on this big cruise. And I was like, oh, that's cool. What is what is it? He goes, oh, it's like the gay cruise. It's the big gay cruise we're going on. It, it goes out this afternoon. Are you guys going? I was like, no, we're, I'm going to work. And he's going to another place. He's like, oh, okay, cool. Super chill. And the guy goes and gets more food. And then I go, Cap, how do you know all those guys? He goes, I, I don't know. And then I said, so what did what, you get into last night? And he's like, no, I downloaded all those apps that you told me about. And I started putting it all together. I said, which, which ones did you download, Cap? And then he shows me his phone. And there it was. Plenty of fish, hinge, and grinder. And then it all started to come together. I said, Cap, no, no, that grinder thing, that was kind of a joke. That's a, an app for gays. It's like a dating app for gay people. And he was like, oh, but I'm not gay. I said, no, I, I know. That's kind of why it was the joke. Luckily, he had a good sense of humor. He started laughing about it. And he said, okay, well, I'll go over there and talk to them and let them know. I said, no, Kev, I'm, I'm sure they're going to be fine. They're about to go have the time of their life. I, I'm sure they'll be okay. And he goes, uh, okay, but he wasn't really good at technology. So he said, how do I get this off my phone? So I deleted the app for him and they lost their chance of dating the Tom Selleck Aviation. For those of you that watched my first vlog that I ever did, it was long, I know, but it showed the preparation that we do before we go to work. And a lot of the times it will take 30, 45 minutes, depending on the type of flying that you're doing, to do the preparation, look at the weather and all the different things that we do. And when you're doing shorter flights, it's a lot less preparation than when you're doing a really long flight. But still, all the same, there's some preparation that needs to be done. Well, when I was at the regionals, I used to always bid to fly in the afternoon because I hated waking up at 5 or 6 in the morning. I just wanted to sleep when I felt like it, go eat my breakfast and go to work. Most of you know that. Well, when you start your pattern at the very start of your four-day trip, usually you'll all show up at different times because you're coming from home or you're jump seating or whatever you're doing to get to work. And I ended up getting there a little bit early, like three hours early, I guess because I didn't have a life. Anyway, so I got to the airport early and instead of hanging out in the terminal where it's really noisy, a lot of the crew, what we'll do is we'll head down to the plane because it's nice and quiet down there. 
So I head down to the plane and I just bring out the cushions and kind of create a, a bed laying down on these seats. There's a way to put the cushions in the middle to make it kind of a lay down comfortable thing and then prop one up. It's, I don't know, it's a, it's a long story, but I would set these things up so I could lay down and relax and play them around on my phone or listen to music or do whatever I wanted to do. It was nice and quiet. I was there, I did the pre-flight, I did everything, and then I would just hang out and sit there on the plane until the other crew showed up. Now you'll notice if you hang around airports for hours at a time that there's these big pushes and that's when all the planes are going out at the same time. And the ground crew, the rampers that are handling all of that stuff, that means that during that phase they're extremely busy. But after all those planes get out, they usually have some time to hang out. Could be 45 minutes, could be two hours. But they're usually just hanging out, waiting for the next big rush, that next big ebb and flow that's gonna happen, the big rush of traffic that's coming in. And you'll notice in the airports, it'll get quiet empty, and then in two hours, it'll just be packed with people, and it just kind of ebbs and flows like that. So when these ground crews have their rest time, they can go do things like hang outside if it's really nice, go play basketball if you work for Southwest, or do whatever you want but a lot of the crew will just sometimes go onto the plane and hang out in the belly in the cargo area. And there's been cases of crews, a ground crew actually falling asleep in the belly of the plane and then having to have the plane turn around and come back and then land again because they fell asleep in there. And obviously some of those belly compartments are pressurized, but some of them aren't, which means that they didn't go back to land, they'd be in a lot of trouble and, and maybe suffocate. So during their break, it wouldn't be abnormal for them to go in and hang out in some of the cargo areas of the plane because they'd be able to get away from everybody and on a really nice day, it was nice to be outside and they had a place to sit down so they would go and hang out there. So it wouldn't be abnormal for me to be sitting on my plane waiting for the crew to show up and hear other voices coming from underneath my plane because the floor of these regional jets, the, the ground there, is, it feels like a, a really thin ply board or something like that. They are just there to create a separation and they have some support beams, but they're not really thick. So you can hear noise or you can hear voices. You can hear that uh, tone if you hear it like through a hotel wall. It's kind of the same thing. You can hear it through the floor. So it wasn't really abnormal that I was sitting there on my seat and I could hear them laughing and whatever underneath the floor. I thought nothing of it. But then I could tell they started having a lot of fun, if you get what I'm saying. So now I'm sitting there in the middle of the plane thinking like, okay, well, what do I do? I, do I get up and walk away? Because if I get up and walk away, they're going to hear me walking down the aisle and that's going to ruin their good time. And I'm not trying to block some people down there. So then I thought, okay, well, then what's my other option? I could take my shoes off and walk. But I've told you before, I would never walk around on a plane shoeless. And so I wasn't going to do that because the floors of these planes are gross. But then I thought, oh, I'll just put my headphones in and listen to music. That seems like a reasonable thing to do. So I put my headphones in and just listening to music and I'm texting with people and I'm actually kind of joking and telling them different stories or who knows what I was doing on my phone there. And then I see one of the flight attendants, Daisy, who was new, I didn't know at that time, walked on the plane. So I waved and then I gave her like this motion, like, be quiet. And so she takes two more steps onto the plane and she was tiny, tiny little thing, maybe like 105 pounds. So you wouldn't really hear her moving around like you would hear me moving around. And she walks on the plane in her uh, in-flight shoes, which are really like low little sandals that are kind of quiet. Anyway, she walks in on those and so nobody could really hear her moving around. So she takes a couple steps past the galley and then she can hear what I could hear. And I, I took my earphones out at that point and then she looked at me and it looks like I'm sitting on a plane listening to two people going at it beneath the plane and telling her to be quiet. That's what it looks like is happening. Now her face goes kind of like to shock and then I realize what she is realizing about me. And I'm like, no, 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 I, I had my headphones in happening. Music, and, and, and then the people beneath hear that they can hear voices now because now I'm in shock and I'm trying to defend myself so they can hear voices so they get quiet and now I'm like, okay, great. Now this is getting really awkward. So I jump up and I'm like, oh no, I had my headphones in. I, I didn't know what was going on. And, and she's like, you knew what was going on. And so I basically sat there and I tried to explain to her for the rest of the four days that I really didn't know what was going on and she wasn't gonna believe me because most flight attendants don't ever believe pilots if we're looking like sexual deviants, they just assume we, we are. I guess the moral of the story is that if someone ever tells you they were getting it on while they were on a plane, it'd be very important to clarify whether that happened while the plane was actually in flight. Because if it wasn't in flight, then it doesn't really count. If you want to see some planes that are struggling to be in flight, check out this video here. And if you want to see some other crazy stories that I've had over my years, check out this video up here. 
I look forward to hearing from you. Until then, keep the blue side up.